Welcome to Pure Rolling 2. Our first match has Aaron on the left and Jorge on the right hand side. Jorge gets a single with a lapel and he'd like to be able to pass over to his left side. But check it out. Look at how Aaron hooks his foot with his left, or the top of his left foot. Jorge's trying to make it over to around the left side. He could alternately step and tip him over to the right, but he's trying to make it over to the left. He hooks that foot, blocks that, and now Jorge gave up that grip because it wasn't serving him anymore, which is so important to do. Aaron's blocking on the shoulder, looking for an opportunity to be able to put his guard back in some semblance. Okay, now this is a complicated sequence right here. Aaron is going to break the grip. Jorge's holding that knee. He breaks the grip, kicks and pulls. And then right when Jorge goes for that toe hold, he inverts. He's able to ride that momentum, that spiral momentum of twisting the foot all the way into a back take. Fairly difficult to choke. Um, one, he's very tough. He's ex-Marine. Number two, not a whole lot of neck. So Aaron is trying to tweak the angle. See, now he's holding onto the hip. It'd be better if he could grab the knee, but it's just a little bit out of reach. If Aaron could get on his right hip instead of his left, leaning in toward his hip, it would make all the difference and really make the choke much more effective. Jorge circles back into him, spins in, immediately starts assembling the lapels. Okay, so Jorge really likes deep half. He's got a bite on that foot and just a little hip switch. And nine times out of 10 in jujitsu, shifting your hip, changing the angle will do it. Pulling down with both lapels, one foot is bound, hip switch right into the sweep. Look at that, very nice. They don't teach you that on the first day. Jorge up on his knees, looking to pass. Aaron circles that leg around. That was a little bit of an opportunity to pass while he was circling, but this is the first round. Jorge and Aaron are, are going for it. They don't have to, but they choose to. Push and pull, push with the foot, pull that hand back, break the grip, limb substitution. Jorge used his foot to do the job his hand was doing. And with a really good guard player, sometimes going for the footlock is a perfectly good solution. Looked like Jorge was going for the foot there, and Aaron squeaks out of it by shifting his hip. Again, shifting your hip. You gotta be in control of your own mobility there. Hmm. Nice little tip up by Aaron. Jorge's quite content to play deep half. See how and immediately Jorge starts getting to work. He pulls on that belt. That's controlling the center, the center, the hara in Japanese. And then he controls the lapel. That's, a, that's actually quite a nice grip. Oh, shifts his knee back. Now he's coming up. Look at that unwinding by Aaron. Boom. That was a nice move. He unwinds so he doesn't get crossed up. Small half step, then a lunge. Bam, right to knee on belly position. Jorge turns away, makes a little bit of space, but Aaron's up on top. Aaron is very active, very mobile, and very precise. He tries coming up. Look at this big step, that big step. Sometimes you can go into a mono plata from there. Jorge has this deep half and then binds that. Aaron's right arm, so he's vulnerable to being swept over to the left. He holds it, but then when he tries to sweep, he extends his arm and Aaron's able to catch his balance. Jorge recovers a position, and so he's looking. He's looking for the lapel. Should I tip him to the left? He's hip to that. Maybe I should tip him to the right, especially because Aaron's foot is almost squeaking out. Oh, almost free, almost free. Tips him back. Almost free. Again, with the circling of the leg. Remember that. That's a very important motion. Jorge to his back. 
constant feeding, constant feeding, binding. That's really the essence of the lapel game. Now, arms on top, boom, quick assembly. And as soon as he goes for it, look at Jorge ride that momentum. That is black belt stuff right there. He tries to get it off, he tips him. Boom, throws that leg over. If he could get his knee under a little earlier before Aaron got that, that pivot and that swivel, he would have been in great knee bar position. We'll see that again later. Now, Jorge really could go for an inside heel hook, but that's not his game. However, at that position, that would have been great. He's going for a toe hold here. Not the best position to go for a toe hold. One reason toe holds often fail is because the leg is too extended. Yes, sometimes you can get it, but the most effective toe holds are when the leg is bent and their foot is compressed back into their hip. So you take their foot back to their butt. Extremely powerful and difficult to kick out of. Jorge riding it out, just defending. It was a nice job by both guys. out from Las Vegas, formerly of South Haven, Mississippi. Jay is a CVBJJ black belt. Um, really an amazing guard. And uh, you can see how Jay works that left foot all the time. It's on the bicep, it's on the shoulder, it's there. Oh, but he was asleep at the wheel. And then Alan sat back for that arm lock. Shift that knee, fall back. And that was a wake up call. That was definitely a wake up call for, for Jay. Sometimes they call um, Jay my little brother because we have similar body types. Oh my gosh. I thought this was gonna be a, a cordial warm up. Started getting started getting a little heated, not too hot, but uh, definitely kicking it off. Now Jay is very much into lapel guard, using that lapel, wrapping the foot, wrapping the the lapel underneath the leg. Look at the sensitivity with Alan there, stuffing that foot, just just holding on at the perimeter of the body. If Alan had been able to get his knee under a little bit more, he would have gone back for a heel hook, but that was just a check, just a little inspection. He's not exactly sure what Jay's strengths are, but I think he's figuring it out. And you have to do kind of tactical analysis in the role, especially as a black belt. So there we go. Now, Alan stands up and gets over that knee. It's very important. He passes, but again, Jay with that foot on the bicep all the time, foot on the bicep. Very, very difficult to clear. It is possible to clear it, but it's difficult. Jay frees that other leg, manages to get that foot underneath the knee. So he clears that, finds that bent knee. Boom, that was a beautiful sweep. If he'd been able to come up and capitalize on it, it'd be a, a little bit better. Alan's back up. Jay's trying to off balance him, but Alan has a really good base. He's got a he's a good stand up yeah. practitioner and uh, obviously very good jujitsu. 
His specialty, oh, look at that limb substitution. Stepping, stepping. You should always be looking for opportunities to use your foot instead of your hand, but you have to be able to hold the position. And he wasn't quite able to get that knee in to complete the guard pass. Boom. So nice off balance to that far corner. And he's trying to go for the back, but Alan senses that, goes a little bit further and then turns around. So he rides the momentum. That's what black belts do. They ride the momentum and then turn it to their advantage. Jay with the lapel again, two hands, then boom, two feet. He wants to find perch for two feet. Alan is now looking to smash him a little bit more. Look, look at Jay. Look at Jay with that foot. Okay, Alan was able to clear that. He breaks that grip, and as soon as he does, Alan sits back for the foot. Now, footlocks are one of Alan's specialties. Uh, he's good at many techniques, but in particular, the 411 leg position, or saddle, many, many different names for it. But Alan is definitely not afraid to sit back for the foot, and not afraid to come up on top either. So he gets that knee in there, but look at what Jay is doing. Jay is feeding that lapel underneath, inverting, and then look at this wind up, boom. Probing with that foot, spins around, actually gaining momentum by inverting. And he's looking to do something with that. So he passes off the grip on the lapel, very keen and like and then gets his knee over Alan's knee. And Alan is like, that's totally fine. That's totally in my wheelhouse. He loves a heel hook, he loves a straight foot lock, and he loves a 411 position. He did an instructional on it, which is quite excellent. Mm. Ashigarami. Triangling those legs or crossing those legs outside, which used to be frowned upon, but now is definitely in vogue. And to make that foot inaccessible, Jay is holding on dearly to that cross grip on his sleeve. Four fingers on the cuff, very, very powerful. If you don't know that, that's an extremely efficient grip. So crossing somebody up, all throws are corner to corner, and you can get somebody in a bad state by crossing him up like that. So we're at a little bit of a stalemate here, but Alan broke free, broke free. He's getting that heel hook, but his hips aren't positioned quite right. Jay tries to step over and pushing on the knee. Jay pushes, Jay pushing on that knee, extracting himself, and we're in a reset position here. Jay throws his belt to the side, so does Alan. Parody. Boom. Move of the day right there. This is good for both of them. It's good to roll with other black belts, especially people that you're not that familiar with. Jay, not standing up. What do I want? Upper body control, lower body control. Feeling each other out, feeling each other out. Try to pass, try to pass. Oh, nice. He doesn't want to mess around with that foot. So he overpasses, he spins and manages to hook that top arm. And then look at the foot land on the hip. Mm, maybe he can get a Kimura, but Jay squeaks out of it. Jay pulling deep half, pulling deep half and leading into an off balance. He gets his shin underneath there. Jay grabs the ankle, switches to the sleeve. Alan's trying to break it and then he back steps. See, Alan did a great pass, but again, Jay and that foot, very difficult, very difficult. We're doing six minute rounds here. Alan looks up at the clock. Jay has his lasso going on. Now watch this grip switch. Grabs with his right, left hand grabs with the right left hand goes over to the tricep right hand back on the collar that is great for forcing an umaplata 
one of Anthony's specialties. You'll see that again. It's very reminiscent of my own game. Lots of hip bump, off balancing attacks. Jay's my little brother. Although he gives me no love a little bit later. Look how he gets that leg like, over the shoulder. That's the beginning. And the hand also. The, the fingers in the armpit, one of the best grips you can get. Holding on to that lap. Good old fashioned flower sweep. Basics never die. In fact, the basics are the things you rely on at black belt. Jay takes the top position and immediately presses on the wrist, but we're out of time. Where do you go? Where do you get going? Jorge and Jay. These guys have trained together for a long time. They know each other's games. Four fingers in the cuff on the pant from Jay. And check out that same grip from Jorge. He grabs Jay's sleeve and then passes it underneath to the other hand. So from right hand, four finger cuff grip, left hand, four finger cuff grip. Jorge has the opportunity to sweep Jay if he bumped him with his left knee and could get him to tip to that top right corner. Jay is pushing down on the knee and looking to extract. Jay chooses to step back. He could go to a 411 or a saddle position. The back step is so wonderful because you can continue to advance even though you're moving backwards. It doesn't happen in all things. He could try and go his legs and go to a 411, but Jay's gonna take his foot, push on Jorge's left femur, and then extract his foot. Well, now, then it's a race. When you do that, you have to stay on top. Jorge turns around and Jay stays in front with that elbow beating Jorge's knee. Guard passing is about beating the knee with your knee and sometimes it's about beating their knee with your elbow. We got knee on belly position which is uh, quite a bit more versatile than maybe taking them out. Jorge defending against chokes there. And Jay snaps into a triangle off that sweep. So yeah, Jay's vulnerable to being pushed back. And he went with it. That's what black belts do. They go with it and set up that triangle. Jorge has excellent posture in this position, so it would be easy for him to smash out of it. Joe Barrera, my jiu-jitsu grandfather, is a master of smashing. Mr. Harris is as well. It's not about just going forward. It's about how you sprawl and thrust with your hip against the low end of their femur where it connects back to their hip. That's the pressure that doesn't allow him to turn, locks him in position. It's untenable and it breaks, just like Jorge did. 
Lasso guard from Jay. He wants to sweep him over to the left side. Now they're square. Jorge grabs that ankle. And Jay kicks it through. He pulls on the tricep and kicks his leg free. Beautiful movement by Jorge. Total weight transfer, very light on his feet. But Jay has that foot and then sweeps. So Jay has that foot on the bicep as usual and then sneaks his knee on the inside of Jorge's leg from knee on belly position. A very popular sweep with Jay. I don't use it that often, but I really should. I've used it before, but not that often, but it's definitely a staple in Jay's game. Side control, sliding that knee over. You don't need to do it all at once. Sometimes you just probe with that knee and uh, maybe get him to push on it so you can take control with the Kimura. Jay stuffs that hand and feeds right to Triangle Maplata. He just holds it in position. So when Jorge takes the bait and rolls up, he's got a triangle. He blocked it with his hand, so Jay quickly switches to the Uma Plata. He's trying to shift his hips to the right, pulling on that belt and pushing on that leg, trying to break him down, but it can be difficult to break people down. Jay sits up a little bit. If Jay could take his right foot underneath Jorge's leg, uh, that would stretch Jorge out and might allow him to be able to finish. But Jorge's controlling that foot, so use what you got. Doubling up on that lapel page out of Jorge's own playbook. Now Jay gets his foot on the ground here, and that enables him to spin in a circle and get a little closer to finishing. Trying to get that Uma Plata. Jay's trying to continually adjust and now he's thinking okay i might i might need to uh do something different jorge's best chance of escape was that move where he tried to circle around to his right go north south and eventually side control but jay blocked it which led him back so watch he blocks block that avenue of escape and do a little hand switch here and he's feeling the pressure the pressure from jorge Sometimes you prevent people from extending into a submission. Sometimes you have to smash them down and just do a little stalemate. So he switches back to the triangle. Sometimes you ping pong in between two different attacks. TP triangle choke. I don't use this. Now, it's not working on Jorge. It would be better. Sometimes it can work and compress enough, but it's so much more effective if you can get that knee notched into the neck instead of the top of the head. If you can get it in the neck, oh, it's over. Back to the Umaplata, playing back and forth. It's like switching sides for the arm lock. You're gonna get one, you're gonna get something. Jorge continues to stuff that foot and make life difficult for Jay. Jay's gonna do a great combination here. So he holds onto the belt. He's getting more and more in line with Jorge. And difficult to see right now, but he goes for a toehold a la Frank Mir versus Tank Abbott. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought it was just drilling. Yeah, Jorge didn't tap. Jay thought he tapped, which causes this little scramble. And now Jorge's, Jorge's working it. Jorge's working it. Jay rolls out, slipping that bottom knee through and gets the knee bar. This is really, really quite nice. Jorge got a little opportunity. That's all you need as a black belt. You get one opportunity and you can capitalize on it. Jay rolls out. Now he slides the knee through first, throws the leg over, traps Jay's leg, and Jay can't get out. And then we have the knee bar. A very powerful position. Jorge almost had that on Jorge almost had that on Aaron, but Aaron twisted and he didn't have the leg bound quite as much. Okay. Jay's on the war path. Jay wants to get him back. He gave him a little bit of an opportunity that Jorge capitalized on, so. Passes guard. Slips to mount. That overhook is not really serving Jay that well. I mean, it's okay, but it kind of prevents him from stepping over into an arm lock or whatever. So it's kind of bound. 
Jorge has two arms underneath Jay's leg, which is actually quite viable. You can actually escape the mount that way. You can also bait a triangle choke and when they, they shoot for it, you're already underneath the leg with both arms. I've done that against very, very good triangle players. Ends up being a little bit of a scramble. Now, Jorge, look what he does with his foot here. Boom, pop that around. More like a De La Hiva hook. And that prevents Jay from being able to come up it's just a little too intertwined. Jay goes for the choke, but his arms are too far out. So, flipping position here. Jay pulls with his hands. The legs are intertwined. Pulls with his hands, and then when he feels Jorge shifting his weight forward, he begins the lift with his legs. Pull. He waits. Then the lift and turn. So he gets that beautiful sweep, and now he wants to come up and capitalize on that position. Every time you sweep, you gotta come up, otherwise it doesn't really count now, does it? Jay goes for that arm lock, and immediately slides toes first in for a possible triangle. He could slide that leg over and try to finish with the arm bar, but you know, he's a triangle guy. So he slides that through. He's a little bit bound by that, that black belt. And he's shooting for it. He could get a triangle if Jorge rolled up, but not enough time. Thank you, gentlemen. Teacher and student dynamic. We have an Imanari roll immediately from Alan. Fun technique, beautiful technique actually. Doesn't get any more circular than that when it comes to jujitsu. I'm bearing my weight down, really putting a lot of weight through my right palm. And I'm going to look to pass, passing to my right side. And then for head control, Alan blocks me very nicely there, but I weave my arm back in, secure head control, then get my back step. I hit my back step here, but then I block his knee from dropping down. And so I secure it. It's one thing to pass, it's another thing to block them from reestablishing the guard. That really is the final element of a guard pass. The back step is a key element for advanced movement in jujitsu. Oh, do see that hand change there? From thumb in to thumb out, fingers in. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, oh, beautiful, beautiful. I passed the guard, but he got that foot in and 
inside heel hook. Very nice. I certainly do not mind tapping, uh, and I don't mind tapping to heel hooks, and I don't mind tapping to my students. So if you get uptight about that, take it from a more advanced player. It's not a big deal. Here I lift Alan's ankle. I use that to set up the triangle or uma plata. It's all blocked on that side, so then I go underneath. Use a little scissor guard, legs are crossed. Sweep Alan over and immediately tack that wrist. I'm very much a fan of, of standing passing. I, as I get older, I do a lot more passing from the knees, but I certainly don't mind. So I hug that heel and slide in. As he tips up, I pull up on the heel. So I'm indexing constantly exactly where his knee is going to be. As I head in, slide my knee under. I know he's gonna rotate. Hold on to the heel, that is such a good grip. That is such a good grip. And I pull down with my thigh for the knee bar. Hitting those cross angle knee bars is money. Alan spins out, kicks with the leg, pulls with the hand, breaks free. He's not gonna get the arm bar at this point. So dropping the knee, he wants to hit the knee bar, but not possible, I blocked it. If he drops and tries spinning back up for the knee bar, I drive my knee into his chest, and then I have enough surface area to block him from being able to invert. So staying heavy. It's all about sliding down and surfing the body, the area that he provides. So I angle my body, he's on his side, and I'm driving him back up. That's so important. Uh, Brandon Mullins would say, correct the position. So I grab that bottom leg, lift up, and get him from off his side to square on his back, even if only for a second. Yeah, I do it a little bit more. He insists on turning up on his side, which allows me access to that top arm. I'm all about hitting that Kimura from there. If you can't get the Kimura because it's blocked, then you use it to sweep him. And if it comes up, then you head into another control position. So I lift him, slide my left knee under the back, right leg goes over the shoulder, and I'm right here. He's got his arms all crossed up, but that's okay. As long as I take the top position. Okay, a little more, a little more pressure there. I'll admit it, a little more pressure. I want to keep him flat on his back. Knee on belly position. I'm a big believer in chokes. I love collar chokes. I love the precision. I love clean chokes. Um, I'm definitely not a guy who goes across the face. I would never choke Alan in the past because uh, his jaw, he had a number of jaw surgeries in his youth and it wasn't sturdy, but they rebuilt his jaw. It's a titanium jaw. So for the first time I was actually considering choking him there, but still we have a lot of options so i don't need to do that had it been really clean it wasn't quite clean enough hunkering down burying yourself into their chest is is really useful and again a little back step he wants to hook my foot he pushes on that i do a little back step and pass the guard. He's doing a great job of blocking, blocking my arms. I'm coming over. I would love to isolate that, that far arm. So I attack for the Americana and I put a little bit of pressure out near his elbow, really pressuring that. And it does lead into the Americana. Bent to straight, straight to bent. Okay, belt comes off. Nice shot by Allen. I like to just counter by sprawling, honestly. 
It's a lot easier than shooting. Just time the sprawl, get the underhook. Tried to sweep, I backstep. I still stay up on top, but I wasn't able to backstep and then get, scoot around his guard. Now, look how low my my arm is around his uh, waist. I really enjoy getting, like, burying my shoulder and head into his torso. That's the beginning of the old man game right there. Pressure, pressure. Now, Alan goes for a lift here. And use that opportunity to step around. So again, I'm backstepping. I'm backstepping, step around, squeak past his knee, driving my shoulder right into his sternum. And there we have it. So I can be light or I can be really heavy. And uh, Alan talked about that afterwards. So knee on belly position. I go for my typical step over choke. I love that choke. If you watch my third degree black belt test, I, I use it quite often. When guys are really tight with their arms, I love to do a step over choke and get them to react to it. So he off balances me, Heisman escape, but I squeak my knee in front. It's a battle of knees. I get my knee in front of his knee and then drop my weight. I'm pinning his wrist at this moment, pinning it hard. He's got me entangled, so I just go for the roll. Being able to assemble a submission, even though everything isn't perfect, even though he still had my legs, that's really a hallmark of a black belt. Rolling over into that Kimura, take it to the far side. Boom, beautiful, beautiful X-Pass. That jumping variation where there's very little contact is one of the best. Excellent movement from Alan there, coming over, getting seatbelt position, defending a little bit here. He's pulling me back. This is not looking good for me. Ooh, saved in the nick of time. Aaron and Anthony. Anthony is the head instructor at CVBJJ along with Daniel McCowan. 
just an amazing guy in general, great instructor, and he's the man. He hurt his knee, but still made it in for this filming, and uh, I really appreciate him doing that. Uh, he definitely has enough skill that even in a, in a less than ideal condition, he can still, still roll with the boys. So what he's doing here is he's playing possum. He allows Aaron to get one hook in, but then peels that out. So you can see Aaron wants to start taking the back. He peels it out with his hand. And he is not interested in facing Aaron's guard because Aaron's guard is really, really difficult. Uh, to approach it, you approach, you know, a lot of firepower. So he plays possum, sits back to his own guard, circles with that leg. It was shielded, so then he goes back to the shin. So, probing, would like to get that foot in the bicep. That's all shielded, elbow knee tight together. So he looks for that shin, moves out a little bit. Foot underneath the shin, starts to lift. He's working it. Foot on bicep. Anthony grabs behind the calf there. There's a lot of counterbalancing going on here. Weight forward by Aaron, pushing with those knees, wants to get past the knee again. Floats to a reverse knee on belly position, and it's a little reminiscent of where Jorge was with the deep half. Aaron realizes he could get tipped backwards, so he is leaning forward heavily. Leaning forward heavily. Look at how Anthony whips his legs simultaneously to change his position. Great use of momentum. Two arms underneath the legs, you can escape. Not great for a street fight, but for this occasion, pretty good. Although, in a street fight, a lot of things can be good for a second. They used to say deep half was not good in MMA, but it can be. Aaron senses that he might be vulnerable to being swept over to the right side. So he does something really cool. He uses his head to base, he grabs that knee, holds on so Anthony can't pull it backwards and come to his knees and, and tip Aaron over. So that was a very effective block on Aaron's part. He lets go. Now Anthony starts moving his legs back, legs back. Anthony's right hand is holding. Anthony's right hand is going to be holding Aaron's pant cuff. So he gets Aaron's hip past that knee and we have the sweep. He circles around, immediately keeps that leg extended. He does not want that foot on his bicep or being able to get some of that firepower going. So it's all about smashing. It's all about putting his chest on those femurs. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Pressure's the way to go with Aaron. I have tried many times to be able to match Aaron's speed and precision, and it's just not, tactically, it's not the right approach. Anthony has the right approach here. Pressure, surface body, block the hip. Don't allow him to come to his knees. Of course, Aaron's trying to turn over desperately at this point. And as a black belt, you know, against most people, he can turn in and be able to recover guard. For example, if they step over to the mount or if uh, they try to take the back, he would just fall to his back and be able to get guard. And he's trying to do that, but Anthony's too savvy. Anthony's too aware. Now that's a, that's a beautiful little check for the balance. Anthony switches his weight, drops the right knee, pulls. Aaron's resisting too much, so he didn't overcommit to it. It's just, it's just a probe. It's just a check. Okay. Now, Aaron would like to probably roll over to his left side. Anthony feels that, and he's going to be preemptive. Aaron might also be looking for a knee bar. Anthony's incredibly dexterous with his legs, so he went from binding Aaron's arm he feels him tipping, he preemptively rolls, gets a position that I like to call death from above with the Kimura grip, and he is set. So, first order of business, get that leg in, 
and it goes over the hip. Let's check this out. Circle, get that heel in, over the hip. Next, go to the collar. You threaten the choke, but it's more about just establishing the position. The temptation would be to go fully to mount, but, you know, or try to take the back, but why not exist in between? Now, he's good enough to have this in between positioning where he's going to attack for the choke. Watch this. Open, open until the moment's right, then feed the collar. Damn, beautiful. So he's patient in that in-between position. Grabs a collar. Beautiful strangle. Well done. Really nice. Anthony and I went in an earlier round, but I'm not showing it. It was more of just a warm up. Got to warm up the king. Now, now you can see Aaron's guard in play. Break that grip, foot on the hip, and he is really attacking. He really wants that arm. Invert for a kimura, invert for a triangle. So what's the answer? Well, it's definitely not matching him speed for speed. Anthony is again going to use pressure. Instead of, he grabs that collar and then look at this, he pulls him, he pulls him in. That's actually controlling the distance. It's not just far away, it's sometimes you can, you can control the distance by pulling them in close and keeping you out of danger. Watch this, lift up, thrust the hips forward. He needs to get his hips past that knee. And now, very difficult for Aaron, very difficult. Of course, there's a little bit of exposure with that, that arm there, not yet because he's holding onto the gi, but now look at, look at how he thrusts his hips forward, forward, pressure, not allowing him to reestablish his guard. Oh, beautiful, wakigatame. When someone's really pushing on you like that, that's possible. Not everyone can get it. There's a, a, a subtle spiral in there as well. Fantastic. Beautiful technique. Alan and Jorge. This should be good. Jorge goes to his favorite position. Alan, look at how he's using that elbow to block his leg. Elbow blocking knee is, is hugely important in guard passing and preventing them from being able to, to um, close their guard. So Alan uses his front knee to push back, but Jorge responds to that empty corner. He can't establish that position. He might have been able to secure a little bit deeper head control, but didn't work out that time. Alan checks for a baseball bat choke, but Jorge blocks it early. Again, that elbow is on the inside of the knee. 
then it goes to the top of the knee and then his hip goes. So use the elbow to slide over to the hip. And now you're using a little bit more body weight before Alan heads into that 411 position. So big back step again, back step. That could be the theme of pure rolling too. Back step, roll back. Incredible heel exposure here for the heel hook. If Alan really wanted to crank it, that is a beautiful position facing on his head. Jorge does a, a relatively decent job of making Alan post with that hand. He, he shifts his weight so Alan has to have that hand. And he's also driving weight into that heel, which makes it difficult to rotate. It's connected to the earth. Alan can't quite rotate his body enough, especially with those legs intertwined the way they are. He's being prevented from doing an upper body shoulder rotation. And so he broke the grip and then Jorge re just regripped. That's one of the issues with breaking grips because people could regrip. And that's a much tighter grip than the other lapel. Sometimes submissions can get a little stale if you get frozen out for too long. So Alan mixes it up. Beautiful sequence here. He rolls to the other side, kicks his leg through. Jorge immediately yanks his right leg back. And Alan is shooting for a cloverleaf position, pulling on that from that leg saddle. Now his levers are very small. Not only does Jorge have really thick legs, he pulls that into position. And I'm rather susceptible to the cloverleaf myself with my legs, but Alan has it pretty low. If it was crossed at more the calves instead of the, the ankles, he would have better leverage. And then again, we have the toe hold, which can work, which can work from there, but toe hold is so much better if it's compressed back into their hip. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. And Alan is, you see, he's doing a, look at that fist. That's a modified position to really make it quite a bit tighter. And he realizes, okay, Jorge is not, not really tapping. Oh, inside heel hook. Look at how Alan swims his upper body around the heel before it hits the ground. That's good. Outside heel hook, you have a little bit more wiggle room. Inside heel hook, it's not worth it, man. Mm -hmm. Again with that lapel. Jorge's trying to get a hook sweep with the back of his knee, but he didn't have the angle quite right. Uh, David Camarillo is a master of that sweep. It makes it very, very powerful. Alan can't really get away with that with that lapel going around his leg, which leads to a nice double by Jorge. Alan does something really sharp here. Immediately he gets that knee in front of the shoulder, trying to manipulate for a triangle. That's one of my go-to positions. You can attack for a triangle, you can attack for Uma Plata, some people call it side guard, very useful. Great sequence. He breaks the grip and pulls it across Jorge's body he gets them all crossed up. Fingers looking for that lat, that armpit. Trying to switch, but obviously as a black belt, Jorge's aware and counter bounces. He's not gonna get tipped to that, to the left there, because he has his leg up and a little push pull and back to square. Gathering lapels. Let's go back to it. Oh. Attempted wrist lock from Jorge. Always worth checking those out. They don't take that long and they could end the fight. Comb your hair, just block. That's a great way to just block a choke. Comb your hair, insert your hand or forearm in there. Now that kind of attack from within the guard, I use that all the time to open up the guard. And Alan did open up the guard. Jorge's trying to dive his arms underneath and sensing that Alan opens up his guard and backs out. Incredible use of momentum there. Standing up, that is a practiced combination. Sweep the guy over, you use the momentum to come up, and then we have an arm bar. Jorge keeps his arms together the entire time. Nice. Look at this thing I did there. Nice. 
I saw it once already. Sir. See, and that, and that right there with Jorge, a black belt can see it once and now they're on guard. They're aware. They know what's, what's happening, what's a favorite technique, what's a favorite position. Jorge goes for a heel hook. Nice leg positioning by Jorge. Tips him back. And turnabout's fair play. It's actually a very nice heel hook. 140, 140. Jorge has really good pressure when passing. He can, he can pass very quickly and then drop his weight, as you'll see later. But Allen comes up on top, and um, it's generally a good thing to do, come up on top. Now, there's not that much time left, so your tactics change depending on what you need to do. Jorge goes for deep half, and Allen rides that. He goes the full circle. Watch this. Jorge spins the opposite direction. Allen just goes all the way around to his favorite position, the 411, the saddle. He pulls that leg up, single leg X right there, heel hook. A lot of control from Allen here, a lot of control. He doesn't quite have Jorge's body immobilized, but he's. this looks better. He's got his body weight on that as well. Very conscientious on how he applies that heel hook. It's highly injurious. Modified, modified. I love those modifications. I mean, it shows you that jujitsu, you can create adequate leverage, sufficient leverage for the submission with a variety of, so there's no one way to do it. It's all about, can your modified mechanics get the submission? And boy, that looks pretty, that looks pretty close. There we go. Nice modification by Allen. And look at the beautiful shoulder slide back goes wrist over wrist instead of hand over hand for that modified mechanic. That's that very nice. Excellent job, guys. Jay and Roy, little brother versus big brother. We have similar body types and very, very similar games. Just looking at him, you can tell he's good at triangles. So he gets that right knee in front of my shoulder. And I want to pass and avoid that foot on the bicep. So I do a quick step around pass, dropping weight through my arms. But he's able to circle. And he off balances me to the front. Tries extending me. I put a little pressure with my elbow then transfer with my right hand to the palm, then transfer to mid-calf, 
because I want to distribute my weight through that and not let him get that foot on my bicep. I can't let that happen. That's not good. He breaks that and immediately I try to pass in that moment. But he's a clamshell. He's difficult to open up. And he got that lasso guard, so I skip back into a more square position. I'm considering going for a footlock right here. He knows that. He kicks his, he pulls my arm and kicks through and then sweeps me. I got a little too aggressive with my left shin across his body. It was, it was, it was not quite right. I put too much weight on him. And so he ends up sweeping me. Now I have thumb in for my collar grip. And normally I would be grabbing his other lapel, but he's got me all crossed up. Look at that. Who taught him that? I switch my hand. I'm a bit of a loop choker. He sent, he feels it and he immediately backs out. He's like, no, 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 I don't want that. Now watch his feet. He windshield wipes, windshield wiper on the leg. And then again, bam, right into a guard pass. That was really nice on his part. And that's very reminiscent of Anthony. He's such a master at windshield wiping, not just in guard passing, but in multiple positions. So little brother in top position, L portion of my hand went to the crook of this elbow. I try hooking that foot just for a second to see if I can, if I can get that. That's not my normal side mount escape. I try hooking his foot. I'm I know I'm going to give up my back, but that's okay. That's okay. I've been working on back escapes um, more over the last year. He steps up, pulls me off balance, hooks my arm, steps up, pulls me off balance. I try to grab his head and scoot out, but he already threw that hook over, and that's now, I, now I'm in it. Okay, now I have to go pure defensive mode. I hide my arm, use my right elbow on the heel. This is a, a great sequence. And now two hands on the head to complete the back escape. So I hide my arm, use my right elbow on that heel, use that to push my hip back, substitute my knee for my elbow, break it, palm on the knee, head up. Then I use my right foot to actually extend his leg, slide my inside knee over, grab his head with both hands, keep my hip low, keep my hip low. I know I'm going to beat him around that corner and then take top position. Okay, now, will revenge be mine? We will see. So I'm putting a little bit more pressure on, I'm trying to put a little more pressure with that choke, but it's not, it's not quite enough. But I, I He got his knee in. I come up to clear. I throw his leg to get the guard pass. I throw his leg pass to get the guard pass. And look at this inversion on his part. See how he sneaks that leg in there? Very difficult. I should be learning a lesson here. I've tried to pass his guard from standing several times, which is normally a, a money pass for me. But each time he inverts and inserts a foot. Go for a little Baron Bolo there. Not my forte, but when in Rome, I happen to find myself in that neighborhood. So I go for it and end up on top. Now, I should do a little internal contemplation. Should I continue? Or should I modify? I really should modify, but I'm gonna continue with these standing passes. So I use my shin to put pressure on that knee and free my arm. Right shin in, circle that hand. And I'm gonna go for a foot lock. Enough of this guard passing. If I can't pass the guard, I can pass most people's guard, but this is, this is particularly difficult. And I want to go for a foot lock, but look. I can't do it because his foot is too too deep in my gi. You'll get a better angle. I would really like to be able to, to either do a straight foot lock or a toe press or, you know. I'm not much of a heel hook guy on, on Jay. I want to get it straight. And he's trying to actually free that foot. I 
think, okay, well, if we're bound in this position, look for a little bit of an Uma Plata. We're in a compromised position, so look, that foot is still in the back of my gi. And that's from his lapel entanglement. Okay, so I figure, let me spin here for the knee bar. But again, the foot was foot was caught, foot was compromised in my gi. Now he's going for a foot lock, but that's not his normal, normal thing. I'm not going to let that happen. So we're both extending. I come up on top. I need to keep that foot off my bicep. I pass, and again, look at that. Inverts and gets that foot in. Am I, why am I not learning my lesson? I think, okay. I scramble up on top. Try to do a, try to pass into a back step. And I think, okay, I'm going to get the knee bar. I'm quite adept at the knee bar, so I'm trying to get it. But he gets his left foot underneath my knee and dumps me over. Ipon. Ipon, Jay. And now he's getting my back. This is not good. This is not the way I wanted it to go. He tries to get my arm, but I escape it. So he hooks over with his leg. Perfect. I bring it in, escape it. I would turn into him, but he, he's keeping me at bay with that grip on my pant cuff. But I'm pretty low at the moment, and to escape the back, look how I hook over my, my leg there. I actually will, can scoot down, 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 and negate his angle. Okay. So here, he's still holding on to that pant cuff, but I get my underhook ready. And then when he releases, I go for a single, but he, he sprawls. Oh, all right, revenge is mine. No. Oh. Well done, little brother. has a really great wrestling background so he just wants to feel what Alan's gonna do here Alan goes for a, an Uma Plata but then look at how Anthony feels that and then sh shoots that arm across he's not gonna let that happen and then his right hand grabs the belt so he can stay ahead of those legs no matter what Alan feeling a little old-school pressure Love that. Watch. Alan goes, and then Anthony backsteps, trying to off-balance him. 
It's just a little check, just a little probe for the balance. If he had tipped him and gotten a back exposure, that would have been a very easy and momentum-oriented approach to it. Again, a back step into a guard pass. Allen is able to anchor with his foot and stop it, but watch this. So simple. Let's grab that hand, then center line, center line control. Back step, looking to get around. Allen places his leg on the hip and effectively blocks that, but then Anthony just switches to putting his weight through the legs. So, leg weave pass, arm weaves through Allen's legs. He does a little windshield wiper there, gets his knee in front, and then moves it at a 45 degree angle. So. He does a little windshield wiper with his leg, which he's brilliant at. Slides the knee in front. Allen gets his top knee in, and then when the time is right, Anthony seizes control and moves that shin across. Anthony doesn't hang out in the mount. He gets off with knee on belly and then takes just a strong side control. Feeling what to do. I love holding the belt from side control right there. It helps trap that arm gives you a predictable area where that arm can roam around and roam right into a Kimura. Now, why did Alan move his hand down there? Because he felt there was space. Not in no hurry to assemble the Kimura. It's there, it's there. Okay. Alan hides his hand. Effective, some guys can, it's, it's actually very, very difficult to dislodge that. Anthony's just checking on it. He's checking, checking. Mm. Look at that sequence. Look at that sequence. Over the arm. Yeah. Anthony puts his weight on Alan's head as he sits into the arm lock. Even though Alan clears that, that's okay. Again, goes to that collar grip. Goes over the top of Alan's right arm. And now Alan knows he's hosed. All it takes is one additional hip movement to be in perfect position for the arm lock. He knows the jig's up. That's that's a black belt tap. You, you know you were just, you were out of position. Yeah, just reset the game. Anthony hanging back. Let's see what, Alan tips him over with one of my favorite ways to get the back. Let's take him not to the side, but actually to the top corner. Alan takes, so, it's going with it, right? Alan tried to tip him to the back, but Anthony added a little bit of momentum to over-rotate and get out of the position that they intended you to be. Our shoulders are on the ground. Alan's trying to hold on to what he has. He has one leg. It'd be a lot better if he had head control, but he doesn't. He's using that same grip that Anthony did for the, for the arm lock across the collar. So as soon as Alan opens, Anthony feels it, shifts his hips up, and then actually rotates in to Alan where he's forced to square up with him. Alan immediately goes into a beautiful guard pass, tries to take the back, Anthony spins, and Alan's all about the Kimura. But Anthony is hip to that and the next step. It's about the next step at black belt. Guard pass to the back, Anthony spins, now, Anthony would have been able to finish that double leg, but his knees a little tweak. So as Alan goes for the Kimura, Anthony thinks about stepping around for the arm bar. Alan knows that as well and gives it up. Anthony steps into a, what I call a low mount, where you triangle the legs around their knees. This is really effective. And people have found that it's also extremely effective in MMA. Um, a great way to immobilize them and punish them up top. Anthony takes that position. Alan's feeling the old school jujitsu and pressure. Now, Anthony pops up to a high mount, pins the wrist, looking. You would think he'd go for a mount of triangle, but he's not really. He's not really looking for a mount of triangle. He'll attack one arm and then go for the other arm. Just feeling it out, seeing what Alan's going to do where the opening's gonna come. Oh. 
Anthony's a master of that elbow control, cupping the elbow. Okay. Nice. So he goes over the top. Alan blocks it with his hand, but it's at such a poor leverage point on the wrist for Alan that it's actually better if he pulls it out. And Anthony sits over for that arm lock. He gets that from a variety of positions, including the guard. So you never want Anthony cupping your elbow from the guard. Um, he can maneuver into a variety of arm locks from there. It's really powerful. And when you use that, size doesn't matter that much. That was really nice by Alan. Look at that. He breaks the grip while it's unattached. He jumps into position over the arm, going for a little bit of a low altitude flying triangle. Didn't work, but how else are you going to get it better if you don't try it, right? We're amongst friends here. Now Alan is going back to a familiar attack here. Arm under, break that grip, which he did for a second. He did break the grip momentarily. Again, the problem with grip breaking is that it doesn't always last. Okay, Alan looking to tip. That was a nice wind up. Going over to his right to sweep him to the left. And Alan back to the well. So he breaks grip on one of those lapels, but look at Anthony's elbow. He keeps it high so it's hard to break. Then he comes back down with the elbow, drives it into the hip. The elbow and the hip is. I don't know if it's talked about enough. Elbow and the hip can stop the hip from rotating into an arm lock. Uh, you can monitor their movements. You can really freeze them out by driving that elbow in hard. Anthony has top half guard with a back step to pass. Let's see how he got in. So he scoops under with his arm, takes top half guard, triangles his legs. That's very important. You can get half guard tight on the bottom and the top. A lot of people don't realize the power of triangling your legs from the top of half guard because you immobilize them. They want to immobilize you, you immobilize them. Nice back step, Alan turns in. And he could step over to mount if he wanted to, but we'll have him expose his back instead, rolls out. Nice work. Anthony's not getting too, too aggressive falls with that Kimura grip. Again, leg over, same sequence, same sequence. He falls over, first priority, get that leg across the hip, get the heel in, nice circle with the leg. Goes for his collar grip, slight adjustment in the hip, and we have it. Masterful stuff. I'm stealing that collar control when you're going for the arm bar. Stealing that. Oh,
Roy and Jorge. We roll together all the time. And it's always a pleasure. He is a he is a marine and uh, a very tough guy. Um, and he is not doing his normal positioning. He is just passing my guard at the moment. So I'm not too worried. I would like to tip him. Mm, okay, so I, I try to use my legs for momentum to tip him, but he's based on his head. So it gets me a little bit of space but it was not what I really wanted. I triangle my legs and push his foot back into his hip. That's the, that is the ideal toe hold position. And I'm thinking, I mean, there's, there's not that many options you have when the, your opponent turns away from you. But I move my hip, I switch the direction of my legs. I'm trying to come up on top, but Jorge dove both arms underneath negating a triangle option. He gets to his up to his feet first, so he had that femur control, and when it comes to guard passing, being able to cup and anchor into that femur connects to the hip, and it's a great way to control them. Now check this out: I sweep him to the left and then go for my loop choke. That's it. He's hard to choke, but it's nice to probe and check in for that whenever possible. Classic elevator sweep blocking his right arm so I have my left leg go high he lifts his leg and I sweep him to the other side Jorge immediately dives that arm underneath which negates my attempt for a triangle and he's so familiar with this this is like his preferred position to be deep half so and now we're in a, a kind of a compromised position. I do have my wrist underneath his neck and I'm, I'm thinking about going for a choke. I would like to if I brought my leg back. He's got his arm connected. It's hard for me to bring my leg back. Here I'm trying to modify my hands for a choke. So I take top position as second choice to the choke. He's playing with my lapel, and I'm looking, maybe I should go to 411 or the saddle position, but his leg is blocking that. I'm trying to lift, and then I say, oh, forget it. And let me just take top instead. Again, he has never let go of my foot that's trapped in between his legs. Very difficult to choke. Yeah, I have top position, but look, he's got two hands in the way. So, you gotta give that up. All right, I'm getting a little frustrated with my foot being trapped, so I base on my head, trying to get a higher ground to be able to extract it, and he goes into what he was looking for, which is coming underneath into a beautiful sweep. And where does he go immediately after that? Once he comes to his knees, he immediately distributes weight through extended arms, and while I'm messing around with this lapel, he passes. Look at that total commitment as he goes into his guard pass. And he would like head control. Turn in. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. So let's take another look at that. He goes knee on belly. I scoop under his femur, block his other foot, end up in a pretty good footlock position. And then I'm going to go into a toe press where my palm is at the top ridge of his toes. He's super familiar with that. I can't quite go back far enough, so I like to come up. Jorge assembles his legs in a triangle with his forearm underneath, behind my knee. That's known as a calf slicer, similar to a bicep slicer, except done on the leg. Therefore, calf, calf slicer. It's a compression technique. Very painful. Excellent. Nice work by Jorge. What do I want? I grab his lapel, because I'm kind of playing around with that stuff, and he immediately passes guard. And he's looking to hop to the other side to, com to really complete that pass. I struggle to get my knee free, just enough room to start to tip him. And when you start tipping someone, left leads to right, right leads to left. 
So he passes with full commitment and he definitely put his weight into me. So I go to the belt. As soon as I can move that leg back, I try to shift my base. Tip up to the knee. He's still holding on to the pant leg. So I fall back and off balance him and then tip him to the right. Switch my hands, grab his hand and assemble into a Kimura grip. This is not the deep half position he would prefer. My leg is under him, so I have to lift, lift, and then extract my foot. So do I want Kimura? Or I'm actually looking for a Sankaku from the side. So I step over that arm. A lot of people think I'm going for an arm bar, but you actually mislead them. You step over the arm, fall to the side, and now my knee is too deeply underneath his back. It really should be under the neck. So then I shift my weight over to the right and try to make it into an arm bar. And that wasn't good either. So now I'm just taking top position. Throw the other leg over. Pull him back. Reach for the collar. He does a great job hopping over that leg, but I still have his arm. Now, he is burying his weight into me. And here, I'm, I'm getting a little, I want that choke. Maybe a little too much. And by him pulling up on my knees, it doesn't allow me to shift my hip to tighten it. So I'm, I'm very close to a clock choke here. Very, very close. Almost too close. Because as I tighten that up, I slide my right leg back and I push up. Now, I might have tweaked my knee right there. It doesn't seem like much. I try to counterbalance him with a big step up and he rolls, but I'm too committed with my arms. I'm too committed and I, I'm forced. So I tweaked my knee and it wasn't even worth it from that position. He goes reverse knee on belly into a toe hold, but again, if it were brought up to my hip, it would have been more effective, much more effective. So I'm just extending and he could transition into another technique, but I do have both my legs over. Four fingers in the pant cuff. Check the time. Adjust my tactics based on the time. Sometimes I'll do something very risky. Oh, he wants that heel, but I'm, I'm not going to give it to him. I pull it back. I'm pulling myself up. Use that foot. Extract. Okay. And the, the, the idea is to get underneath that elbow. That's the priority. Underneath that elbow. Use my head a little bit. The head on the elbow has a little known detail for the Americana. Sweat dripping off me. I'm thinking about transitioning to the other side for the arm lock. But I use my head to hold that in position. And even though the arm wasn't in contact with the ground, that's a very tight Americana. Nice work, Jorge. Thank you. Thank you
Thank you, Lord. Jay and Anthony. So, Anthony goes down to a traditional Nawaza turtle position. In judo, if there's no action for, you know, 10 seconds, they'll stand you up. It's an incredibly powerful defensive posture, not impossible to defeat. And so Jay tips him over. This is very cunning on on Anthony's part because he doesn't have to deal with Jay's foot and you know, passing his guard and getting around that stuff. If he pulls guard, then it's not really that much of an issue. Anthony's just kind of messing around here. Foot underneath the knee, it should always, the instep should always be underneath the knee so you can check balance and sweep if you need to. Insteps should definitely have a magnetic attraction to the back of the knee. So Jay's going for the slow and low, that is a tempo approach. Anthony's blocking him and checking a little. Note Jay has that top half guard, which is, and then he opened, but then, oh, he's back to it. And Anthony's back to his Choke, just checking each side, trying to get a response. Now, even though speed and power go down over time as you age, sensitivity and timing can always improve. Think about that. Jay really wants that head control. Anthony is okay. He has that hook underneath Jay's knee. Now he tips him out. See that sway? Just that little pull out to the right useful. You're, you're checking. You're checking. If Anthony can get a toe in, it's very possible you could sweep. He's so good with his legs. Then he goes back to triangled legs, looking for that lift, looking for that lift. Jay gets a little room on that other side, and Anthony springs into action. So he slides his left knee in, and then shoulders back. So important. Shoulders back. Starts working on that Kimura slash Umaplata. Mm, that is so money. Check this out. It's all about using the off balance to get where you want to go. Anthony pushes with his hand and he's about at the extent of his reach. So then he goes the opposite direction. He goes to sweep Jay back and then the other direction, the original direction. Left, right, right, left. So then he continues to push, feed that overlapping pressures from hand to foot for the umaplata. Nice. Beautiful. Really nice. Hand extends. He gives himself a hand, positions his leg, overlapping pressures from the hand to the foot, shifts his hip a little bit, comes up on that elbow, and he's well positioned for that nice. submission. Really, really nice. Love it. All right. <laughs> You'll be nice. Then. Number two. Okay. With this reset, it might be better if Jay didn't allow Anthony to get any grip at all and did something more reminiscent like that X pass that uh, Alan's been doing. Anthony's doing a great job of just holding him off. He's not trying to dictate the position too much. He's got the reverse de la Hiva. Then he crosses his legs. A bit reminiscent of Jorge and his, and his half guard. So a little sleeve control. Jay goes into a back step. I love those. When you have the hooks underneath, it's, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. You can keep somebody elevated and off balance with your butterfly hooks. I uh, see. Jay's trying to extract that leg by pushing with his left knee into Anthony's leg. Mm. The 
bottom of that pant cuff. So powerful. Let's take another look at that. So, do I defend the collar? Do I grab? The nice bridge. Yeah, he's caught with the foot, but he extracts. And immediately Jay turns over, exposes his back. Anthony takes his back. <clears throat> and he's not in a rush. He's not in a rush. Slides a leg in. Transfers weight to his elbow so he can come up and adjust his positioning. And feeding from the side. Feeding from the side. Doesn't need to get pure back. Uh, no, that's a, that's a more classic back positioning. Okay. Pulls that down. He's patient. Gonna get that hand in there. Take off the hand that's blocking. And then use that to feed more deeply. So you don't need to be in a rush when it comes to these kind of chokes. Mm, this is this is so great. Death from above, that 45 degree angle where Anthony can really thrust his hips in. So he almost has it here, follows Jay up top, and then hits at 45, death from above. The knee goes over Jay's forearm, which was blocking. He thrusts his hips down, body weight plus hip pressure. Sorry. Great choke. Okay, cool. Very powerful. There was not much I could do to signal here. Anthony was sensitive. Jay was having a little bit of difficulty with tapping there. Sometimes your arms and legs are both bound, and it's difficult to signal submission. So blocking, blocking again. He doesn't have to deal with Jay's guard if he gives Jay a superior position and then reverses. Anthony gets that armpit grip, but doesn't go gung-ho, not 100% energy into it. It's essentially a kisagatame from the bottom, or, you know, a head and arm. He tries to roll him, Jay steps, Anthony goes back the other way. Well, it doesn't mean it's over. He's still got that foot. Mm, beautiful, beautiful reversal. Distracts him with the choke. Bowls him over. Mm, back step. There it is again. Back step as he grabs that outside pant leg. But Jay, crafty as he is, look at that, look at that. Foot in the gi, feeds to the foot on the bicep. That's a very high and powerful obstruction. And Anthony, he knows how to deal with it. Shucks out to the side, the other leg comes in. He tries to get to the other side. If the foot's on the bicep, the answer is not going to the right side. Now, Jay's getting creative. Foot's getting all up in there. We want to go to a leg drag position. By hook or by crook, we are going to get to that leg drag position. Jay is still adamant about having that foot in there, and it's difficult. So he he's finding that to be a salvation, but then Anthony uses it against him. So he's pulling down on that tail, but he's actually, yeah, he's compressing it. He should have left it a little more extended because now he gives Anthony the ability to hook around his neck. And then to relieve that, he's got to give up the grip. Not much time, short time. He needs to just slip around that elbow. Mm. Slip it around that elbow. Beautiful fist choke, Ezekiel choke. Many names for it. Oh, with just a second to spare. Beautiful. Nice, beautiful. 
Stand up. Oh, to the Imanari roll. Oh, stand up to the Imanari roll. Alan wants to go to his A position. He's got a lot of good positions, but definitely heel hook is an advantageous position in submission for him. Or a uh, leg lock system to use Danaher parlance. Senpai Danaher. Aaron's going to go double under here with his arms and. And whether Alan releases or he actually pries it open, he's ready to spring into action and then get to his best position, which is his guard. Alan, sensing danger, goes immediately back into leg lock position. So he comes up. Look at how those legs assemble right into the bicep. Really so precise. And Alan tries to go there, but isn't able to secure the heel hook. See how... Aaron blocked him there from wrapping over. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Almost got a hook sweep there. Tripod sweep. Little, little hand malfunction, but each, each, each guy's cool. Not that big of a deal. Going for the X-Pass. He's so sticky. Aaron is so sticky. You wanna do an X pass? Guess again, buddy. And on the way back, even if he lets go, on the way back, as you're bringing it in, he'll he'll trace your, your leg. So, very difficult, very difficult to pass that. Mmm. Alan blocks that lasso guard pretty efficiently with his shin. I need to, it's a timing based thing, but I need to use that a little bit more, you know? Trying to escape. Okay, yeah, so he does get. Oh, that was. This is such a gorgeous sequence. Tony Anthony and I couldn't be prouder. This is so technical. Okay, so. He steps, knee on belly position. Aaron has that foot in, inserts the leg, and then a step away. He steps out like a single leg escape. And then holds on to those ankles. Until Aaron tips. Oh my god. Really fantastic. Very technical. Aaron has great sensitivity with that right foot as well. Whether it's cupping the bicep with the toes or then it switches over. Aaron switches over to that other bicep for a second. Yeah, so I really, I really like, okay, Alan circling that and then Aaron going with it. It's very jujitsu. 5%. And Jared Overgag definitely deserves a shout out for some excellent camera work. Very physical camera work. It's not easy to do this job, so the first cameraman for Pure Rolling was pretty good. And I think that Jared performed admirably. Let's see, look at this. Alan, I don't even fully understand this interplay. He's hooked there and then he switches to the other leg with his right and wants to get that heel hook. He wants to get that heel hook going. Aaron will gladly take that. He's a master of stepping out of uh, your ex guard. And, oh, we got a nice cramp, nice cramp there. Back in action with the second camera. So I'm not gonna be slowing things down as much, only 80% instead of 50%. Great guard pass by Aaron. Needs to drive down, knee on belly position, but he's a little bit light. <laughs> Alan's a, Alan was able to ride that. Remember that. Anytime someone goes to knee on belly and slides to mount, bump them in the direction they're heading. Doesn't have to be that explosive either. It's more about just keeping that ball going, keeping the momentum going. Aaron's on his back, goes to shin-on-shin shin guard. 
What do I want? The heel or the sleeve? Heel or the sleeve? The guard replacement and the reversals are just so quick here. Blocks that heel. Then a little tip. Oop. And Aaron's up. Oh. Yeah, let's bring it back to the center. I'm getting a little close to the bleachers there. We don't want any incidents. Alan's cramp. Ooh, beautiful. Boom, 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 boom. Right into, I mean, it's a, it's a classic flower sweep. I don't use that variation that often, but it certainly is effective. <laughs> Basics. Mount escape by Aaron. Aaron's left hand helped, and Alan's chasing it, which allowed him to create space. And he dismounts in search of a Kimura. That didn't happen. Look at how aggressive his legs are, climbing all the time. And he's really working on that arm. Hand in the collar. Just trying to get a basic angle. Just trying to get off center. And Alan does one of my favorite attacks, stacking and choking, which almost always compels him to open the guard and attack my arm. Oh my gosh. Searching for that arm bar. Weaving those legs around the head. Such a technical match. Uh, I think he wanted a footlock there. And Aaron, beautiful, beautiful guard pass. Look at how he gets this leg. He ensures, whoop, step around. Boom, not everyone can do that, you know. And then he comes up on top. And in fighting for coming up on top, He's able to secure the Japanese necktie. Kind of like a Doris, but a whole lot meaner. Great work, guys. hearted shot but I actually want to pull guard one reason is because Aaron's guard is so good I would actually prefer to be on the bottom and then sweep to a top position where I don't have to mess around with this guard so cross grip no I'll take pretty low on his sleeve and then use my shin in the crook of his elbow to get a half sweep there Sometimes you, it's okay if it doesn't work out. It initiates action and opportunity. So I sweep, pull that heel in, go to a single leg X. I would love to get a toe press or foot lock, but he, he straightened his foot and rotated it so I could pull it. Oh, but I followed it up with a sweep. There we are, there we are, there we are. But the irony is, I'm back in his guard, trying to pass his guard. Very difficult. 
So he tips me over to that top corner. Beautiful off balancing there. Makes me catch my bounce with the hand, then the knee. Now I'm thinking, how am I gonna get around this pesky foot? Maybe I should take the other foot. So left foot on the hip and I just extend. I have a pretty good sensitivity with the straight foot lock. I keep my arm loose until it's very, very low, and then I turn, 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 turn. Arching the upper third of the spine is particularly important. It's particularly important when it comes to the straight foot lock. Most people throw their hips forward, but they don't arch the upper third of the spine. Straight from Mr. Harris. So now Aaron pulls guard immediately. And it's tricky, it's tricky. When he has that De La Hiva hook, I, I try backstepping. I mean, we've rolled many, many times. I try backstepping into that knee bar. But I can't really isolate one leg. He's messing with the other leg. His other leg is messing behind my knee. So I can't index his kneecap against either my inner thigh or my hip. I was really pulling there trying to trying to make that happen. So so I go back to the well. I want that knee. I, I, I would rather not pass his guard. I prefer to get the knee. He circles that leg around. So I come up. I go back. I'm just trying to get my hips below his knee. He's trying to keep his knee above my hips. And then he circles around with the right leg. So it's a little bit messy and he's going for, he's going for my legs. Drop weight into my knees. He's, he's really good at off balancing. So see how he pushes into me with this leg. Oh, and is able to squeak into that heel hook position. Now, I don't know, maybe I should have tapped right there. It wasn't, it was close. It was close. I definitely felt the bite. As he spun under, that's such a nice little corner to access the heel hook. I separate the legs and free my knee, but it was definitely, it was definitely made me think. So that was good. Now I just need to get over that knee. I'm trying to bear down weight on him. A lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. Oh, all the way to north-south. Look at this. I let go. Throw his legs by. He wasn't able to find perch with his foot. I also find that collar from north-south, which allows me into the bread cutter choke, and then use that choke with the transition to mount to finish. North-south is definitely the place to get that, that initial grip by the shoulder before the thumb grip comes in. A little bit of grip fighting. It's going to be difficult to get under Aaron's center of gravity, so I have this idea to do a katagoruma. The only problem being that it was pretty bad. It sets up for a reverse triangle and then a kimura. It's pretty bad. It's, I just thought, oh, maybe I should go for a katakuruma. And phew, against Aaron with his triangle and his, uh, that, that, was, that was an experiment. And that's okay because we're amongst friends, but just know if you want to be successful with something, even as a black belt, you need to practice it a whole lot more. A whole lot more. So he gets a little bit of the lasso. I square up with him. I use my knee to clear on the left-hand side. He tips me up. Nice sweep, actually. That was, that was beautiful. Normally I can catch my balance, but not this time. I come up. I blend with his sweep with a back step. Push my weight down, 
pin his legs. Oh, no. Single point of pressure. Single point of pressure with my with my shoulder into his sternum. Step over choke. I can't get it the first time, so then I go knee on belly. Kill that bottom arm, step over choke. It's so important to get rid of that bottom arm. And then you can step over into it. Awesome. Thank you, Aaron. No. Thank you. Thank you.